Tidy Ho. Here we are. Um, part five. I'm going to make a collage. Um, not many of you said you would like a collage, um, but I'm kind of assuming that you just didn't feel like answering. Um, and some of you did. So for those that did, um, particularly over on the Hillary B page, um, which is where I'll post this. Thank you very much for that encouragement. I do like encouragement, you know. Um, I think we all do. Um, and if you don't say you like something, I don't know, I could just be wasting my time, couldn't I? I could just be doing this for no purpose whatsoever. Absolutely. There we go, that's the watch on the floor. For no purpose whatsoever, I know you wouldn't want me to do that. So anyway, here we go, making the collage. Now just before I do that, um, I'd just like to show you actually the kits. For those of you that didn't watch her chanda, it is still available on Rewind. Um, if you go to um, just Google in her chanda, you'll bring up their... Um, their site and then click on rewind and the show is still there um, but these were the kits that we had on the show so I thought I would actually just show you to keep them to you because they're really, they're, they're really nice kits actually this is the this is the one for the small roses so you've got your fabric paints you've got brushes palettes um, a chunk of fabric stuff to make your stamps on foam foam board um, and all your instructions and designs so that's the small one um, where's my medium here's Mr medium yeah these are quite good I just think they're nice kits. I just, I went, I was packing them up today and I thought I'll show you some kits because they look really pretty. Um, so, you know, slightly more fabric paint in this one. This is the medium one um, for a 12 inch square. What comes next? Mr. Large. So, this one, um, quite a big chunky kit here. This is the large panel for a 16 inch square. Again, bigger pots of paint now. Um, in all the kits, you get twice the amount of white as any other colour. Um, and in this one, you also get. Um, a larger pack of paintbrushes um, and you get more funky foam and more designs to use. The same is true of the extra large um, which has larger pots of paint again and a great I think this one has one and a half inches of fabric in so that's um, that's the extra large panel which will make you a 20 inch, um, 20 inch square and this is the one for the triple panel um, which makes you the triple hanging so this is like three times kit one in here um now i say they'll make these they'll make a lot more than that actually um oh and i'll just show you the paints little paints so these are this is six times 50 mils um of the paint fabric paint it is the same paint i always use i've just bottled it um in different amounts for these kits that's simply all it is um so those are 50 ml pots and then these, which I won't bother trying to pack, these are the 100ml pots. And these are in these nice, um, if you've bought 100ml pots of acrylic wax off me, um, I sometimes have these pots. And these are really nice pots to reuse after um, you've used the paints because they're great for storing other things. You know, the watertight, they're nice and um, they're just, they're a good size for putting dyes and things like that in. So that's your six pots of that. So you get six colours in the paint packs seven pots in the kit because you get that extra white um, and I wanted to show you as well shall I take those off the table I think I'll do that in a second um, that no I'll do it now I'll do it now just hang on hold hard hold hard see this is where where's the floor manager where is the floor manager I asked myself you notice I know all these terms now I am fully whatever the word is not literate not literal not anyway I can speak <laughs> And speak the lingo right so a bit of space there i wanted to show you these are the fabrics that i was doing the other day um and this lot here uh, have all been made out of one meter of fabric so and my pots of paint i had the 40 mil pots which come in the larger kits um but i've only used about half of them so i've only actually used about 20 mils of paint in here um to make all this lot you know which is the amount of paint you get in the medium kit i think um so i've got um let's go in with the colors we were doing to begin with so we were doing if you remember the purples where's my rose anybody see my rose anybody see my rose oh my rose is stuck on the back of my file here we are so if you remember we had the purpley rose so we were doing some purple fabric so we've just got a mix here of hearts this was one where we color washed the background and then did leaves on top that was one where we blotted off the color wash background so there's just a bit of color in the back and hearts on top that's onto white with the double stamped rose that's onto purple with just the positive roses and then we've got the little rose in a checkerboard, um, just the negative images. 
and oh, I'm loving this one. This one we've got the hearts um, with that dotty heart, if you remember we did that with the biro to just add some texture to the foam. And this one is just using the leaf stamp, some really appallingly poor printing there, but I'm not bothered about that, that would be fine. This one was the one where I went in a panel across the middle. This would look really interesting over dyed because it's got some uh, quite a bit of a paint, white paint in the middle there. Um, but it's lovely as it is for what we're doing. And this one was our triple heart. Um, and then these ones, um, we didn't do, I didn't do these on the videos, but I wanted you to see them. Um, this is one piece that I've done where I've actually gone in and added a colour wash afterwards. So I've done one piece, you can see it joins in the middle. Let me take the pieces out from behind so I can see that's confusing. So that's one piece of fabric, you can see the hearts join up there. Then I've torn it in half, and one half I've colour washed and the other half I haven't. And I colour washed this from the back of the fabric, and because the fabric... Um, we talked a bit about the count of the fabric, and these are a low count fabric, so not too many threads per inch. That allows the wash to actually come through and put some background colour in. So those are really nice. Um, I've done the same here again. Let's see if I can find the join. There it is. Um, so this is again was one piece of fabric that I've split, colour washed half from the back and not the other half. This one is one where I have used the hearts. Um, as a positive and negative on this side in a geometric pattern and on this side I've used just the positive in a very random pattern and again I have colour washed this piece of fabric from the back after after painting. This one I have also colour washed, I'm not sure about the colours I've got on here but I've colour washed it in pink um, over some green and blue hearts and again I did that after painting and this one is the one that I actually started to demo on the Hachanda show. So this is this is as far as I got on the Hachanda show was just these few hearts. So I've added some more in um, when I was finishing off the other ones. Finished that piece of fabric. And then I also did, because all those blues, purples and greens are going to be lovely with my purpley rose, but I thought I could just do with a bit of an accent colour can make it much easier when you're doing a collage. So I've chosen to get to use um, red and yellow simply because the... Um, if you know your colour theory, I've got green and purple on my fabrics and the complementary colours to green and purple, that is the colours that are on the opposite side of the colour wheel, um, are yellow is the complementary to purple and red is the complementary to green. And those colours when used, when you use complementary colours, colours on the opposite side of the colour wheel, you will get a real zing to your work. So if you're trying to just lift something a little bit, that can be a good tip. So I've done some, just look at those. I've done some red and yellow hearts. Look at these red ones with the stripes and, well, and spectacular Mrs. Stripes and spots, loving that. Um, red and yellow on there. I've done some red checkerboard roses here. I've done a red and yellow leaf um, positive and negative and now I've done some red yellow and green um, with one of the leafy type stamps and just some yellow and green so that's going to give me a little bit of variety so that I can kick things up a bit so let's keep those to one side and let's get started so I've got myself a piece of felt here this is wool viscose felt it's very good quality felt this isn't cheap acrylic felt the only reason it's not cheap acrylic felt is it doesn't work very well with cheap acrylic felt. I've tried it. Um, I come from Yorkshire. I will do things cheaply if I can. But I found that when I used the acrylic felt, it was too stiff. I didn't, I didn't, it didn't like the hand and feel of it, but it was so stiff that when I tried to block things and, and, perhaps, and perhaps finish them, it just had no, it had no kindness to it, no giving the fabric. So if I'd gone slightly off square and was wanting to get that back straight, there was nothing there in the felt. And I actually did do um, a big quilt with acrylic felt and it all went horribly wrong. Um, and I had to spend hundreds of hours um, seed stitching over the whole of that to try and calm things down so i will never do it again so i now use um the wool viscose felt um so and i've got myself because i'm going to do the medium size rows so i've got a 12 by 12 canvas here and i've simply marked on my felt the size of my canvas because that's the size of the piece i'm going to make so i've marked that and then i'm also going to mark if I can find my pencil. Hang on, bear. Oh no, we weren't going to say bear one anymore, were we? Mind you, we haven't said it for a while because we haven't done any videos. So I'm just going to mark on here where I've got the square in here. Let me hold this up. I hope that I never quite see what you can see. Can you see I've got the square marked onto here? 
So all I'm going to do is continue those lines to the edge of the felt. And this will mean when I'm collaging, I can see where the edge of that square is. And you'll be surprised how easy it is to get yourself mixed up and start collaging to the edge of the piece of felt rather than to the edge of your 12 inch square. Now one way around that would be to cut the felt to 12 inches in the first place. Um, but if you do that, you haven't actually, I'm going to machine quilt this and I haven't got anything to hold on to um, when I'm trying to quilt to those edges. And also if it shrinks a little, which things do sometimes when you're um, machining them um, and ironing them, I haven't got any spare to go at. So I always do mine inch and an inch and a half big around the edge. No more than that, um, more than that would make it easier to handle, but it really makes it quite hard to actually see where your design is. So I've got my 12 inch square marked. Let's move my canvas because although things look beautifully neat at the moment, I know this won't last. So let's take my pile of different coloured ones and let's take my rose. Hang on, I've got an itch down my back. I'm just going to do it with my scissors. I know I shouldn't do this, but my back scratches in the other room. I need to do more yoga so that I can actually reach. It's always the point on my back that I can't, I can reach some of my back, but the bit that I can't reach is always the bit that itches, sod's law. Right, so I've got my rows here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to reduce the amount of excess fabric around it, I think. Um, there's a bit more than I want there. So I'm going to just, I like the torn frayed edge, so I'm just going to put a snip in and tear my fabric off. So I've got that piece nearer to the top. I've probably got, what, three quarters of an inch above my rows? Half, three quarter. And I'm going to do the same here. This is where you hope your fabric is nice and square. And this is, uh, yours should be, because I actually tore, I say I, some of my friends tore all the fabric from the bolt so that you would get a straight grain on it. Right, we'll go there, and I think it might leave the other side, it's probably a bit, <laughs> can you see we've still got my fingerprint on there, I'm impressed with that, I think there will be the hand of the artist in this piece. So I'm going to decide which side to put it. Now when you're deciding on comp, I mean I could go on about these things for hours, you know that, but let's, let's get this very, very simple. I don't like things right bang in the middle of something. Most people don't either, unless you're going to build a sort of radiating Mandela type design around that. Um, so I would be tending to think of taking this off centre somewhere. There's, in design theories, there's the basically the rule of thirds, which says that if you divide this square into three that way and three that way, where those intersect, those four points, are the points where people's eyes will naturally gravitate to, that are pleasing places to put your focal point. So that says there, 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 or there. And I think you can see that all of those, there, 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 and there, all of those are actually, it's positioned nicely within the frame. Now, for me, I'm not overly keen on having them high and floating. Unless I was going to have words down here to ground this, it's just, I just doesn't do it for me. These things will be personal. Just work out what you like. And the best way to work out what you like, just as a bit of an aside, is to play in your sketchbook a lot. Um, or do lots of collaging. Or do a collage sketchbook. No, there's another. Anyway, shut up, Hillary. Let's get on with this. So we could have it up there. I'm going to go for a lower position of it because I like that so I would go slightly to the bottom to ground it and you can either have it left or right now because we in the west read left to right we will tend to veer towards liking it better to the left reading across to the right now it doesn't have to be like that you can put it over there and do one back the other way and if you're doing a series that are going to hang of say three above each other you well might well want to tweak one across to make some variety but let's keep this relatively simple so i'm going to put my rows over so i've got it off center off center to the left and off center versus horizontally slightly to the bottom and i'm just going to start getting some fabrics to go with it. Let's take those blue ones out. I might use them 
but they're more to go with the blue rose than with this one. Let's get into my purples. Here they are. Here's my bad boys. And what I usually tend to do with this is I just find one I like a lot. And that classifies as one I like a lot. So straight in with a great big piece of purple and that grounds things beautifully. It's quite a deep colour and it just grounds my composition very, very nicely. I think you can, I mean, you could leave that at that, couldn't you? If that was a white canvas, that would do. A bit hand stitch around there, jobs are done. But let's, because, because we have made the time to make all of these, let's use some of these other fabrics. And we've got those glorious roses there. How are we doing for time? 15 minutes, not bad for me. I'm loving that. Sometimes, sometimes you'll start a tear easily and sometimes you won't start a tear easily. That was a case of it wasn't going to start easily. So, and you can see I'm kind of putting lighter-ish fabrics up towards the top, deeper ones at the bottom. Now, again, that's personal choice. You don't have to do it like that. I think probably if you, like me, suffer from depression, you are going to prefer your dark things down or anxiety down at the bottom because it's grounding, it's safe, it's secure, it's where the deep things, you know, it's where the earth is. The earth is dark and it's down and the sky's light and it's up, except for when there's a thunderstorm and how oppressive does that feel when the sky's dark? It feels very oppressive. So dark things at the top will tend to make things feel oppressive. So I am wanting this to be cheery. So I'm gonna go for my darkest color down here. I'm loving that rose print up there. Really, I don't need to find many more pieces I like in here. That, I'm liking that. Let's just look what else there is because I've got quite a lot of fabrics here. Um, I did make a lot. Oh, I've got more rose. Oh, I've got those groovy hearts, which I really did love, but they're in a very similar color. Let's try it, let's try it. They're in a very similar color scheme to the roses. So if I do that, it works. Let's do it. Let's you some <laughs> students and you will know who you are. These students will often try to do this without tearing up and cutting up the fabric because they want to keep the big pieces. You can't. You have to get it torn up so that you can see what's going on. I mean, I've got to say I absolutely love that to pieces. Love it to pieces. That is just gorgeous, isn't it? Mind you, I'm losing, well, there's my, there's my spot. I'm losing my spotty one, which is where there's a spotty one up there. Now, so I could do that and put some of that rose there. Oh, hang on, another, oh, this is gonna be a nuisance. Another back scratch moment. Okay, there we go. Um, I'm actually looking in the monitor here to give me an idea of the composition. And I can see that really, though I like that. It is all much the same at the top. So let's just try, it's not wrong. I do like it, but let's just go back to that there and let's get, there was a piece with a green wash in the background, wasn't there? She says picking up a completely different one, but that's, that's, oh, I don't know, that's quite interesting. That's interesting. But where was that green washy piece, chaps? Was this him? I don't think that was him, but it is nice. Let's um, see what that's like. That's a nice combination of colours, isn't it? I've seen the green washi piece. It was this one with the little light hearts on. And that also looks nice there. So really, this is, you know, it's all going to come down to personal choice here, to which one I choose. Um, let's have a look at that. This one's a lot darker. Puts a bit more oomph in it, that, doesn't it? But then perhaps it makes that area too light if we do that. Does it make that area just too... I think this is a better blend for me. So I'm going to get a piece off. I don't think I can get away with a piece that size. No, I can't. Well, could I get away with a piece like that? And could I then put a run of hearts across here? Bearing in mind how much I'd like one of those. Oh, look, that's rather cute, isn't it? Let's, let's, do, let's see if that works. So imagine we put that... I'll tear it in a minute behind there and then imagine we find some of my arts some of my arts my arty oh look that one that bad boy could go there and then that would be sticking out i like that so i'm going to do i actually need anything behind the rose or is it just going to be a case of a little show through of it but maybe there's some consistency to that so let's tear off this row oh this one doesn't like tearing in that direction let's tear off this row of hearts 
and put that there. Now I can decide whether I want it over or underneath this bottom piece. I'm going to tear off that bit too. So I've got a nice strip of hearts. Now, how do I want to do those? Do I want them over or do I want them under? Let's get my bottom piece. A piece of salvage there. So let's get my bottom piece. I'm looking at where these edges are. I need to keep these and remember that my edges are in here. So I'm going to take that piece off over here. I'm checking you can see. Yes, you can. Just so that I get proper perspective of what's going on here. Okay, now I can put my rose there. I really do like with that bit of a heart sticking out. I could take them across a bit. Now I can either leave that sticking out there or I could tear that off there so that the rose was just on one side. But actually, I think I quite like it popping out a bit. I quite like that. Just puts a bit of variety in there. Now then, now, so actually, and typically for me, I've worked in a very gritty fashion here. I frequently do. So I tend to work in blocks and grids and lines. So I've put a strong vertical, no, strong horizontal, some strong verticals, and then I've added another horizontal. Um, that's how I like to make compositions. I just nearly always end up doing it. I don't do it on purpose. I just do end up doing it. Um, you will have your own ways. Some people like diagonal composition, some people like radiating, some people like to use curves and circles. I would encourage you to play a lot and find out what you like because it will help you quite a bit when you're making things. Right, so this piece can have, I like to save as much as I can because I can use it for other collages, but I'm not going to go mad on this. So if we put that that way around and then that just needs to go under that one, which is there. So I just want it to tip under this piece or indeed tip over it. That's but I, I think, well, I say that maybe I would like it over the top. Let's see. Let's see. No, I like it better with the roses on top. So roses on top, hearts there. I'm letting those overlap a bit there. And I'm very happy. It's a very simple composition that I've only got one, two, three, four pieces of fabric. But I really like that. Now, the only thing I need to think about now, <laughs> I've got three minutes to think about it is, is whether I want to add a complementary colour to bounce that up. So let's pick up this. OK, and you can see even just hovering it near it. <laughs> what a difference it would make if I put some of this in. It's either red or yellow or both. Or I'm just looking at that and thinking those hearts that I've taken all that time could have been done in red and yellow. How would that look? Too much for my mind, too much. So let's put those back. I think what I would like is just a little bit of it. So I'm going to find, let's see, this is perhaps a little less... Yes, this is a bit more gentle, this rose one. I think so. What about putting a strip of this oh, right down the side? Let's see what that does. You just put, not a lot, but a little of that spark of colour in there. And to me, that works beautifully. So I'm actually might end up with that nearly off there. I don't, oh, the only, do you know, the only thing I've got against that, you can probably guess what it is, and that is it's covering up my heart. But sometimes you have to live with that. So I could have it like that. That's one way. It works really nicely. The other way, which wouldn't cover up my heart, of course, would be to have it down here. And sit those on it. That's nice too. I like that as well. I might do that actually, because that leaves my heart showing, leaves that peaking. I'm liking that very much indeed. So I think I'm going to stop with that. I'll just trim that one off. I'll get that stuck down, um, which I'll do with heat and bond. There's a video somewhere else. I think it's in one of the um, language and flowers ones of sticking stuff down with heat and bond. So I'm going to stick that down with heat and bond and then I'm going to go in and um, machine embroider this um, and get it finished off. So I hope that's helped with the collage. Um, enjoy collage it's a lovely thing to do that went down remarkably quickly sometimes it can take me days to do them so don't be impatient with yourself my advice would be if you're new keep it relatively simple and relatively plain 
go for blocks, go for a grid. You could do a log cabin. You could use um, log cabins, one of my favorite blocks, rail fence, any of those kind of fairly straightforward blocks. Use those as ideas for how to lay things out and just enjoy the process. You will all have different things. Right, I shall leave it at that and go upload this. Bye for now. Bye.